Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is vowing to continue operations inside Gaza until they achieve, quote, complete victory. He says it would take a matter of months and then went on to say that Israel must be able to act inside Gaza at any time in the future. We are on the way to complete victory. The victory is achievable. It's not a matter of years or decades. It's a matter of months. The IDF is doing amazing things, methodically progressing and achieving the aims that we have established. Shattering the Hamas, destroying them, getting the hostages, and promise that Gaza will not be a threat on Israel. I've established that this complete victory is our aim. This is a decision I brought to the government at the beginning of the war, and we will not do less than that. Well, Mr. Netanyahu's comments come just one day after news that Hamas was presenting a three-phase plan in response to a proposed hostage deal. It includes the complete withdrawal of Israeli troops from Gaza, as well as freedom of movement for people inside the enclave. But Mr. Netanyahu earlier was quite clear, saying Israel hasn't committed to any of Hamas's, quote, crazy demands. The prime minister was speaking following his meetings with the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, who has been carrying out a day of crucial diplomatic talks in Israel and the West Bank. Well, we do expect to hear more from Mr. Blinken later this hour, and we will bring you those remarks live when they happen. Well, international pressure for a truce has intensified amid a threatened Israeli assault on Rafah. More than a million Palestinians are now squeezed into the southernmost town in Gaza, pinned near the Egyptian border with virtually nowhere else to go. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres is sounding the alarm, saying if Israeli forces press into Rafah, it will, quote, exponentially increase what is already a humanitarian nightmare with untold regional consequences. Well, these satellite images of makeshift tent cities give you an idea of how many lives may be at risk. A top Israeli commander says there is no place, no plan in place yet for how the IDF would minimize civilian deaths. And while there's no ground offensive yet in Rafah, Israel is repeatedly striking buildings from the air after previously encouraging Palestinians to flee to that spot. The situation has gotten so dire that some families are pitching their tents in cemeteries. One father says he fears safer living among the dead. People were forced to come here, to this safe place, the cemetery among the dead, which is better than living in the residential areas where the houses could collapse over our heads. We came to live among the dead because of fear and horror. We are just learning that the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has raised concerns about Rafah during his meetings with Israeli officials today. We have that reporting from our very own Jeremy Diamond, who's joining us now from Tel Aviv. Good to have you with us. So the Secretary of State is in the region, a crucial day of meetings. And today, of course, marks four months since the Hamas terror attack. What more can you tell us about what Antony Blinken is saying? Well, the Secretary of State has been meeting with Israeli officials throughout the day. In fact, we just heard his motorcade drive right by our position. And what he's been doing is reviewing Hamas's latest counterproposal with Israeli officials to see what the next steps of this negotiation will entail. But as he was doing that, the Israeli prime minister coming out very strongly in a news conference with all of the kind of fire and brimstone that he is uh, known for, rejecting Hamas's counterproposal, making clear that Israel will not commit to what he described as Hamas's crazy demands as it relates to the number and the types of terrorists that should be released. And of course, as it relates to the broader idea of a permanent ceasefire in Gaza, which Hamas is very much still pushing for. Instead, the Israeli prime minister pushing for absolute and total victory, vowing that military pressure should continue on Hamas uh, and that surrendering, he said, to Hamas's demands would be only asking for another massacre akin to October 7th. Now, that is the Israeli prime minister's public posturing, and we have to keep that in mind because this is Bibi Netanyahu, after all. When you look at what they're doing behind the scenes, it may be something else altogether. It's clear that the Israeli government is not going to 
uh, accept Hamas's counterproposal, but it doesn't mean that they won't continue negotiating. In fact, they very likely will continue to negotiate. Uh, where they end up is another question, but what we do know is that the phase one proposal that Hamas put on the table, as opposed to the broad framework phase one proposal that Israel had offered just over a week ago, they're actually quite similar. So there are certainly some differences, but there is also real possibility, real opportunity for these two sides to begin to move forward towards at least perhaps an agreement on that first phase. But again, the larger question is, do they need an agreement on all of these phases? Will they accept an agreement on one of these phases in order to move forward with a temporary ceasefire, with the release of hostages? Those are the questions to be answered, and those are the questions that the Secretary of State is probing today as well. And of course, these are all short-term options under consideration. Uh, we did hear today from Saudi Arabia about long-term options. Uh, they put out a statement saying they won't resume ties or have ties with Israel without the recognition of a Palestinian state. This is the statement. They said the kingdom has communicated its firm position to the U.S. administration that there will be no diplomatic relations with Israel unless an independent Palestinian state is recognized as per the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. Uh, so take us through the various positions, because we know for a long time now the U.S. and, and U.K. have said that a two-state solution should happen. Uh, what is Saudi Arabia's position and where does Israel stand right now? Well, it really seems to be a question of timing, certainly as it relates to the U.S.'s position versus the Saudi position. I mean, Saudi Arabia here is making very clear that there needs to be international recognition of a Palestinian state before they will agree to normalize relations with Israel. The United States, uh, in contrast, has perhaps talked about finding some kind of way to get commitments, to get a kind of a clear timetable, a clear process for the establishment of a Palestinian state, and that perhaps that would be enough for Saudi Arabia to normalize relations with Israel. Now, as it relates to the Israeli position, it is completely far away from both of those, and that's because Bibi Netanyahu, the current Israeli prime minister, has repeatedly not only taken credit for the fact that a Palestinian state does not exist today, but he has also vowed that Israel must retain security control, that effectively a sovereign Palestinian state will not be established on his watch. Um, and so that is certainly a big part of the discussions that the Secretary of State has been having today, not only here in Tel Aviv, but also in Ramallah, where he met with the Palestinian Authority president. And the U.S. is also pushing for major reforms to the Palestinian Authority in order to make that body more capable of governing not, governing not only in the West Bank, but also in Gaza, and more palatable to Palestinians who view that Palestinian Authority as corrupt, as uh, lacking credibility, and of course reforms that will be necessary for the Israeli government to also accept what they view as necessary reforms to that body going forward. Linda. Jeremy Diamond for us in Tel Aviv. Good to have you there staying across all those developments. Thank you.